Hello, everybody. I'm Krasi, and I will be uh, informing you about very, very important celestial event, very important. On 15th of March, Neptune, one of the three trans-Saturnine planets, is entering Pisces, where he will be staying for the next 14 years. This is very important transit, major, which usually, it, it, it doesn't happen in just any lifetime that we go through because he's very slow. He stays one, he stays in every sign, 14 years. If you, of course, I'm talking from the perspective of the sidereal astrology. Uh, this is the astronomical situation. When you look at the sky, you will recognize, we don't see Neptune, but I mean, uh, just to illustrate you, when you look at the sky, literally Neptune will be in Pisces when uh, now on the 15th of March. If you're following the Indian sidereal astrology, we have uh, only a few, I think one degree difference with them, but we do follow the same sidereal um, logic, astronomical logic, the, then you will find out that according to them, uh, Neptune entered Pisces just, I think, like uh, two weeks ago or something like that. This is a major, very, very significant, very important. The three trans-Saturnian planets, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto, uh, work very, very much on the collective. They do uh, bring events and they do influence us as a whole, as a collective uh, consciousness, the, our egregore they influence. Of course, they do have impact on the <clears throat> individual horoscopes, certainly, but um, uh, the mo they do major, major work on the collective. And yes, in a moment when I uh, explain you uh, my point of view on his entrance into Pisces and what I expected he will be bringing in, in form of events. Of course, I'll be looking also at the 12th ascendants. Now, um, who is Neptune? Neptune in the Greek times was the god Poseidon. And he was the son of the um, Titan Cronus, who is Saturn. And he was the brother of Zeus. And he was ruling all waters that you can imagine. Uh, also earthquakes, the dry land, and he was ruling also the horses. Therefore, he was celebrated as um, with horses and there were some temples of, Neptune, of Poseidon uh, in Greece. Also, yes, I mentioned he is a brother of Zeus. Uh, and he was a major deity because he would be one of the uh, deities on the Greek uh, pantheon. The later times, the Roman times, he was the god Neptune. What is known, similar thing, he would rule the waters. Um, I don't think that he was mentioned to be ruling the earthquakes but um, he was known as to rule the spring waters and he was mainly associated with waters. And he was celebrated as um, on the 23rd of July because this was the season when the water was scarce. So this was their way of uh, invoking um, water and fertility. And actually uh, the, this uh, celebration the festival was called Neptunalia, same way as you know, around uh, Christmas time, the Romans celebrated Saturnalia. So, yes, Neptune, we know him as Neptune, and this is a very, very major event happening. What is he doing? He is entering Pisces, where he's ruling, where he's feeling comfortable. What is he doing in Pisces? What is Pisces? Pisces is the 12th house of the Zodiac. And actually, this is considered to be malefic position. Pisces is the house of the bad karma. Uh, it is the house of, um, well, it is associated with Christianity, Pisces. Uh, it is associated with um, mercy, with suffering. Uh, Pisces 
the twelfth house of the zodiac is the house of, of course, naturally rules the the, the feet from the uh, body parts. But Pisces is our hidden place. This is your sleeping room. Pisces is the temple that you'll be visiting. Pisces is about the the sick, the poor, people who suffer, even the prisoners. This is about Pisces, the bad karma. And imagine um, Neptune is entering Pisces. In the beginning of his entrance, he will meet there Jupiter, who will stay there for another month. So he's meeting basically his brother Zeus. Uh, this is this will be even stronger influence. But more interesting is the fact that he, at the moment of his uh, entrance, he will be in exact conjunction with the sun just before the Babylonian New Year, Akito, because on the 20, 22nd of March, um, when the uh, moon is entering the point of the vernal equinox after the sun is entering the equinox, um, well, we see the sun entering Pisces and Neptune will be exactly conjoined Pisces and will meet their Jupiter. This is um, not literally, but when we see planet in a very close conjunction with the sun, we consider this planet to be invisible. So Neptune is entering and will not be visible. Yes, you will say that he's, also, he's not even visible from our perspective, but this is even more powerful because he enters conjoined. It is like, it's about purifying. It's very, very delicate energy. What is Pisces and what is Neptune? We can also look at Neptune as similar, but more um, maybe loftier and finer, if you want, collective energy, as, which is resembling the energy of Venus. Some even say, I'm not sure if this is so, but we may think about this, that Venus is the higher vibration of, of Venus. Could be because Neptune is about pure spirituality. Because remember, we are speaking about empathy, mercy, suffering. Uh, because of the nature of the 12th house of the zodiac. Neptune is, you know, I uh, I was wondering for years, years, how come? Because Neptune, we say that he's eventually higher vibration of Venus. And I was thinking for years, how come uh, somewhere in 1813, 1815, around um, the beginning of the 19th century, we had this group of amazing, gorgeous, beautiful musicians, which were uh, creating the most beautiful operas. With this is Verdi, this is Puccini, Rossini, uh, Donizetti, and, and more. And these people came as a group. And what did they have in common? I was wondering for years, and I was looking, I was thinking, how come now the real art is really scarce? You basically cannot enjoy true art. You cannot see new opera to impress you. You cannot see fine art like the art that you know from the Dutch um, artists, you, you know, which were, which were drawing with, where they would take the brush and they would cut all hairs until there were two hairs left on the brush. And they would paint for years and they would create such beauty that the world cannot understand it until now. I was thinking, how come, why these people came as a group? And when is this going to be repeated? I miss the true art. And you know what I saw? These people were born when Neptune was also highly dignified in Scorpio. Why? Because he was dignified by triplicity. Neptune was in Scorpio. And he gave, he allowed this great, souls to descend and to make us happy until nowadays with their operas. But why this was not repeated? 
because Neptune was not powerful enough, yes, Venus can create great artists, yes, but not such artists, not with that lofty, gorgeous, a fine touch. No, Neptune can create them when he's highly dignified. And he was highly dignified when in Scorpio, when most of them were born. So this is what I saw now in the horoscope of Verdi and the others. Neptune was in Scorpio and he opened the gates of heaven so, so that such great souls to descend. So imagine if Neptune was dignified by triplicity, meaning that he was in the same um, water trigon. Imagine what will be happening now in the next 14 years when Neptune will be in Pisces. Can you imagine how many great artists with their fine, fine, fine touch, fine art will descend? This will be amazing. The next 14 years, the, the, the artists that will be, will be born will make a revolution in, in, in terms of any fine touch, fine, delicate art. It's, it will be indescribable. You will see that. It may not happen immediately. This may take, um, I will make a separate video on this. I'm, I'm still researching. What else do you need? You know? Because there will be exact degrees of stars influencing. I haven't really researched into such great detail, but I'm very excited to do that. And I will inform you. So this will be one of the most gorgeous aspects of the presence of Neptune in Pisces because you become great and fine and delicate through suffering. Unfortunately, your, our souls become wise and fine through suffering. That's why we come to experience what we experience on Earth. This is why... Not solely Venus gives that, but Neptune. Okay, so that much about art. But you will see what will be happening um, when Neptune enters Pisces. Another thing. Yes, there will be craziness. Literally, you will notice a rise of craziness because the low vibration of Neptune would be associated with illusion, um, craziness. And when he enters Neptune, you will see a rise of illusion, detachment from the um, our reality and craziness. You will see amazing rise of pure real spirituality because we do see also illusionary spirituality. There will be um, philosophical um, you know, maybe um, groups or gurus that will be very fake, that will put you in a state of illusion. But then when we speak about the high vibration of Neptune, there will be very, very real ones, which will come up with amazing information, healing knowledge to, to people, to humanity. Because remember, this works tremendously on collective level. Very very much. Then, uh, of course, healing, new healing, new, um, this will be supported by Saturn in Aquarius. There will be new recipes for healing, new remedies, amazing new remedies. Yes, new diseases may also appear because Neptune, um, in, but again, you make sure that you remain vibrate without fears very high because this can work on different levels when you opt to uh, to be to remain very brave uh, very open for the blessing of the universe without fears without worry you will manage actually to stay on such uh, in such a reality that you will get only the good from this transit, which will be amazing information, healing, um, receiving um, growth of your intuition, intuition, amazing. You can, you know, um, chance to, um, to 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 grow uh, to with your knowledge uh, to. Um, 
to become more and more intuitive, informed, and to get even uh, some spiritual uh, talents. So this will be also in this direction. To the world, of course, it will be a lot about water. Remember, Poseidon and both, and Neptune, both are associated with water. Even uh, eventually, we can have a race in earthquakes um, in the world because Poseidon was ruling the earthquakes. And also he was, I don't know how this will impact the horses, but let's say, let's expect positive development like the horse sports who have, uh, uh, will become very uh, attractive again to people, will become very massive. Maybe new breeds will come, you know, I don't know, but it will impact somehow what he rules because now he's very, very, very uh, powerful in Pisces and this is rare. Um, also, you see, it is up to us. Now, here, important note to make. When uh, we're talking about the three transcertain in planets, and in general, when we look at the collective mundane astrology, we need to um, take into consideration that often, most of the times, we receive the more challenging aspects of their natures. It means that uh, until people really get together as a whole, as a collective, uh, to be very, to, to, to be on a very high vibrational level, to become very brave, to become very spiritual, to become very moral, uh, you know, and not to allow any uh, illusion and fears to take them, to, to, to influence them, will may still be. Uh, under the more um, lower and more challenging influences of, of the trans-Saturnian planets like Neptune. But if you opt to be moral, strong, brave, courageous, um, not to really allow any media to have uh, scary and <laughs> impact on you, um, then you then you have great chances to experience only the good impact influences of these three, the three trans-Saturnian planets, Neptune, Uran, or Uranus, Pluto. So this it's, it's up to us, really. But this is a great chance to purify, purify our karmas individually and also collectively, to, to become very lofty, very spiritual, very empathic, towards each other. This is very important because remember we're talking about the 12th house of the zodiac where you have suffering, where you have mercy, where you have healing because Pisces is associated with Jesus Christ. Um, so it's up to us how we really work, play our cards. We can really, really benefit from this, like to become very, very um, to open our senses, to receive the best of spiritual information, to grow spiritually, to work on our intuition, to um, you know, to, to become more uh, helpful and merciful and empathic towards each other, and so on and so on. In terms of art, I told you, this would be very, very, very great uh, chance. So saying this, maybe there will be more to say and I will be researching this further. I will be looking at um, um, some historical dates. And I will be most probably speaking more about that. But I was just so excited to say now what I uh, planned um, to, to tell you. But let's see how this will impact the 12 ascendants from sidereal, bold, and tropical perspective. OK, one second. Okay, we are starting with sidereal ascendant Aries or moon in Aries. Or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this would be Taurus. 
Now for you, Neptune will be on your 12th house. This actually for you is a great chance to, you know, to open your senses, to find healing for if you need, to, to, to help others, to work on your spirituality. Um, it will be very benevolent because Neptune for you remains in his natural 12th house position to help you win over enemies with love and peace eventually, if possible. Um, because he's a lot about that. You know, I'm uh, applying here the, the energy of Jesus Christ, which is associated with uh, Pisces. But um, he will give you opportunity for healing, healing old wounds, uh, forgiveness and whatnot. Um, so this will be amazing. And this can open doors for you for new maybe new uh, philosophy, not fake. You have to be, of, of course, very uh, careful, you know, to, because uh, as I told you, he can create also illusionary um, energies. So now we look at people who have sidereal ascendant Taurus or moon in Taurus, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Gemini. Now for you, Jupiter and Neptune will be in your 11th house. This is good because this can shape your social circle. This can introduce different people, more spiritual, more empathic. This will shape your um, social circle. This can be very big blessing for your children, also financially. But yes, it will depend a little bit on how your Neptune is positioned in your horoscope. But in general, this is uh, will be good aspect to your ascendant. So I do think that you will have a uh, very benevolent uh, presence of Neptune on your 11th house. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant uh, Gemini or moon in Gemini, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Pisces. For you, interesting, um, Neptune will be on your 10th house. This is your career place, how, highest of goals. Uh, this will make and make your career place more lofty, more pleasant, applying your intuition, applying your even art, you know. It can be very, very good. Um, of course, be careful that you're not um, under the influence of certain illusionary uh, plans or per perspective. Just remain Apply your intuition. Uh, and, uh, but Neptune can bring very soft and very beautiful energies in your career place. So this is also very, very interesting. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant uh, cancer or moon in cancer, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this would be Leo. For you, this is your ninth house amazing for new spiritual experiences, eventually philosophies, maybe religion, um, spiritual um, traveling, you know, researching spirituality. This can give very um, amazing blessing on your studies. It can create very peaceful environment when it comes to studies, even travel, um, like um, the, those spiritual travels, you know, and yes, new knowledge, philosophy, maybe meeting new guru in your life, new spiritual uh, teacher, which can be very, very important for yourself. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Leo or moon in Leo, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Virgo. Um, now for you, this is your eighth house. This can be very, very, very spiritual, deeply spiritual. Can also um, help you to open your senses, to, to, to show you truth, to show you secrets. Uh, can be positive for healing. Uh, can be positive for some finances through partnership or partner, finances of your partner. Uh, for you, be very, very spiritual and also benevolent, uh, most probably. Uh, experience, but he, he can show you, um, he, this is very positive, soft touch on 
eight house matters because some of them can be grim, can be a little bit uh, sad because eight house, you know, is associated to fears, death, rebirth. But Neptune is having soft touch there. So I don't think that he'll be associated with fears. But just the other way around. He can show you the truth with a very soft uh, touch. Now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Virgo or moon in Virgo. Or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Libra. For you, this is major because Neptune will be entering your seventh house. From there, he influences you, your spirituality, your intuition, your growth, your health in a positive way. But he can bring very interesting touch in your romantic life, marriage, agreements, contacts. If you maintain very high vibrations of, um, you know, of, of, of joy, of um, uh, lack of fears, um, lofty philosophical approach, this can have very good impact on your relationship. Like this can restore the peace if you need. You know, to, um, can be very, very uh, positive. Also, when, you, when it comes to agreements, this can bring luck, contracts. Um, Neptune can bring uh, peace and um, it will directly influence your personality too because this is an axis, an angular position. This is the seventh house in your horoscope. Now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Libra or moon in Libra. Or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Scorpio. Now for you, this is the your sixth house. Health, um, your routine. There, Neptune can restore peace in your routine, everyday environment. Can, in the beginning, can uh, eventually be a little bit challenging for your health, but then can be very, very helpful to make you find... Um, remedies make sure that you vibrate very high so that he doesn't really bring you any um you know a, too much of attaching to something or uh, you know um, make sure that he that you that you remain very positive very brave because um with such attitude he can only review good to you he can restore the peace in your routine environment he can bring you remedies uh, and so on so it's a little bit uh, depends on our choices very much. And now we're looking at people who have Sidereal Ascendant Scorpio or Moon in Scorpio, or if you're following the modern top, tropical astrology, this is Sagittarius. Now for you, um, Neptune will be on your fifth house. This is very good. Fifth house is benevolent. This is the house of the good fortune in astrology. He can support your art, artistic talents. He can give you a lot of knowledge. He can give you, he can support, he can give you uh, new opportunities to make money and like through your own intuition, finding a way. He can show you such path through real knowledge. He can bless your children. So actually, uh, he, he being in benevolent house will bring you benevolent things, but once again, depends on his position in your natal horoscope. But in general, in this benevolent place, I think that he will bring you good. And now we look at people who have sidereal ascendant Sagittarius or moon in Sagittari or Sagittarius, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Capricorn. For you, this happens to be your fourth house. This is your home. This is associated to parents. A property he can give you um amazing you know uh, very delicate um uh, touch to your home uh, he can make you totally rearrange your home creating something beautiful and artistic there he can support uh, can be your communication with your mother and also career wise can make you, he can help you restore peace at home or with parents if needed or, or in your career place. Um, in general, this is very benevolent placement too. Uh, 
but I repeat, depends on our vibration. If you opt to fall in the state of illusion and lies, uh, yes, we, you see, we attract what we vibrate. Um, now we look at people who have Sagittarius Ascendant Capricorn or Moon in Capricorn, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, um, this will be Aquarius. Now for you, Neptune will be in your third house, exactly to support your studies, knowledge, spirituality, awakening, finding new knowledge, new philosophical and maybe a spiritual path, helping you giving you very in, uh, giving you opportunity to um, work on your intuition on your awakening so he will have mainly spiritual impact on you I think in a very very positive way and now we look at people who have Sidere or send on the Aquarius or moon in Aquarius or if you're following the modern tropical astrology this will be Pisces now for you this is your second house this is very interesting I don't see this directly, immediately associated with finances, but actually, why not? This can help you restore peace with family rules, family members. Can help, of course, um, you uh, can bring changes uh, gradually in your finances, like uh, giving you, showing you new information, new opportunities, through your intuition, maybe. This can, of course, modify your financial situation. Um, can also, yes, can also have impact on the finances of, of, of your partner, his health, uh, finding remedies. So this can be quite benevolent. And now we're looking at sidereal Pisces or Moon in Pisces, or if you're following the modern tropical surgery, this will be Aries. Now for you, this is the great uh, thing. This is your ascendant where Neptune is entering to stay there 12, uh, 14 years. This is major. This will be very, very uh, changing, transformative for you. Um, like after this um, transit of 40 years, you will not be the same person because you will be so much uh, more uh, spiritual, awake if you vibrate high. Otherwise, this can put you in very much of um, illusionary uh, status. So make sure that you embrace this with uh, very much brave heart, with, uh, because this will be major change. Your perceptions, your spiritual searchings, your, this can even have impact on your romantic life. Embrace this, make sure that you are very um, uh, awake, and apply fully your intuition when it comes to decisions, to, to choices, to, uh, to your plans. And then you have actually wonderful experience, very positive and very fruitful. Make sure that you remain very moral, very spiritual, very um, empathic to others. But this is the energy which comes on your ascendant. So ladies and gentlemen, this is about this major important uh, transit. Um, if you want to know how this personally influences your horoscope, of course, you can contact me um, for a reading on my website. The coordinates are under this video. All the best to you and your comments will be very interesting on this subject.